Hello, welcome to my warehouse. My name is Blake, and you may have seen my how to sell Dollar Tree books and make money online video. Or maybe you've seen my other videos on how to sell books. I don't know. Uh, but if you're here, it's because you want to learn how to make more money by selling books. That's the title of the video, some variation of that. So here are five tips to do that because a lot of people, they know how to scan the books, they know how to ship the books, but the, the nuances uh, are lost on them. Hopefully I can elucidate and teach you a few ways of the book Ninja. Tip number one is it's a numbers game. A lot of people get caught up on getting the most money out of every single book and they don't care how long it takes. They go through scanning an FBA, looking on eBay, looking on book resale websites, all that stuff only to find out it's a dud. So they've wasted 15 minutes on one book and made zero dollars. Instead of optimizing for every book's profitability, optimize for profit per hour, per day, whatever metric you want. When you do this, sure, you're gonna be leaving a few bucks here and there on the table, but you're going to create a system, a process that is streamlined and allows you to process more books, get more books out the door, and thusly make more money. Easy ways to do this, having stations for scanning, prepping, shipping, something like that. When you go book by book and look it up each way, you are tempting yourself with wasting time. No, create a process and buy into your process. Tip number two is not every book is sold the same way way. I am a big proponent of Amazon FBA. I love it. I sell almost everything via FBA. That's where they store it. They ship it out. But, 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 but I do sell some books, CDs, DVDs via FBM or on eBay or even locally in Facebook groups. Why do I do this? Because it's easier to sell a lot of kids books, for example, locally. It's easier to sell a bunch of sci-fi novels worth a dollar on Amazon on eBay in a bulk set. It's easier to hold on to a very rare book with a, for example, 7 million sales rank back in the warehouse for two years to sell it instead of having it sent to Amazon, getting the storage fees, getting it sent back to me, resubmitting it, all that stuff. So these are all ways to make money, but by understanding that, okay, if a book has a high sales rank and low competition, it's FBM. If books have low sales rank, low price, uh, and it's the same genre, it's going to be eBay bulk lots. If they're just random ass books, Clifford books, whatever they are, they're going locally. It doesn't have to be these things, but you have to figure out what are the easiest ways to offload inventory. What I named were four very easy ways, but maybe you have other options around you. Maybe you have book buyback stores. I don't know, but by understanding what each outlet specializes in, you can optimize your time and make more money overall, although probably losing a bit per book. Here's an example of a book that I would sell FBM. It's a Randy Moss kid's book. Uh, Capstone High Interest Sports Heroes. Very cool. Big Randy Moss fan. If you're my age, you didn't, you had to watch him growing up. Uh, this, the sales rank here is 3.5 million. Lowest FBM price is $35. I will go just beneath that. Uh, and because the sales rank is so high, I'm going to put it back there in the warehouse. On eBay, they're not worth that much, like 12 bucks. I don't know the exact reason why it has to do with the dynamics in each marketplace, but I don't question that. I only look at the numbers, and the numbers say this book stays uh, in my warehouse, whereas like this book right here is gonna go Amazon FBA. The third tip is package them correctly, and this is more a tip for rare books. Books like this right here, this is already dinged up, kind of bent. Uh, if I put it in a poly mailer, if I were to sell it myself, not through FBA, it wouldn't be a big deal. However, however, let's say I have this book set right here. Can I put these books in a poly mailer? No, absolutely not. They would fly out and give someone a concussion and it'd be a big ordeal, shut down the post office for even longer than they're shut down right now. So what I would do for this is put it in a box, uh, secure it safely, but there's more. What if the book is rare? What if you have a first edition of Dune uh, and it's got a really nice dust jacket. What do you do then? You put it in a bubble, in bubble wrap, you put it in a box. There's not specifics to what you do, but just make sure if you're selling a book that's rare or special or a special edition or whatever it is, make sure that you are sending it in the way you'd want to receive it. It's the golden rule. If it has nice, fancy embossed designs, put some bubble wrap over it. If it's autographed, and it sold for 200 bucks, 
put it in a box, spend the extra 10 cents. Little things like that cut back on returns, which in turn make you more money. Tip number four, learn your niche. Now let's say maybe you want to do 60s, 70s sci-fi paperback. You have to learn the good publishers, the good special editions of books, the good authors, what kind of cover art is worth more than other cover art. Here's what I did. Two years ago, I bought all of the copies of Dune, the hardcover 1960, whatever version, off of Amazon because some of those were first editions. The first edition book sold for about 80 bucks on eBay and the regular just whatever book sold for about $12 on Amazon. I bought them there. I learned the niche. I had been studying it for a while. I knew that these first edition books had more value if you took individualized pictures of them. And I flipped them for, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks profit. It was more of an experiment. I'm not going to do it a lot because I don't like online arbitrage, but buying books that you know have first editions in the Amazon inventory and then parsing through those and flipping the valuable ones, that's a side hustle right there. So if you're diving into a niche, you're not just learning the titles, you're learning the publishers, the authors, the editions, everything like that. And there's more. There's a whole lot more than what I'm saying here, but it's going to be individualized and specialized towards the specific niche you are pursuing. If you do that, if you become an expert in, like I said, 1960s sci-fi, you will make so much more money than the average bookseller who's just scanning, slapping on labels, and FBAing them. Tip number five is be patient. Patient with your prices. What do I mean by that? Do I mean charge a million dollars and wait a million years? No, I don't. But if you see two people who are racing to the bottom because they have auto repricers like Jenison Books and Books Galore, for example, on Amazon, two giant booksellers, if they are every hour going down by one cent and the sales rank is low, let's say 15,000, and there's only you two, and those two and you, don't try to match them. Be patient. If you believe a book is worth more because of the history of it, uh, because of the supply of it, because of a lot of reasons that are going to be specific to the book you have, do not feel obligated to make quick money, especially if you're buying books for dirt cheap. That's why I love books. These books right here, I paid 10 cents a piece for these. Like I said, the Randy Moss book, it'll sell for 35 bucks. It might not sell for six months, but I paid a dime for it. A dime into $35, even if it takes six months, just find 180 of these and you're making a profit every single day, you know, when it all averages out. Being patient is by far the most valuable strategy, tip, whatever you want to call it, that I can give you. Uh, because I can give you all the advice in the world, but if you get antsy and you sell fast, it doesn't matter what I said, you undercut yourself. That's the video, folks. Thanks for coming by, and as always, don't be a shithead.